Welcome to Authentically Woman, a sanctuary dedicated to empowering women. We are a faith-based healing circle focused on changing perspectives and inspiring healing through authenticity and vulnerability. Join us in this journey of empowerment and healing. Welcome to Authentically Woman, a sanctuary dedicated to empowering women. We are a faith-based healing circle focused on changing perspectives and inspiring healing through authenticity and vulnerability. Join us in this journey of empowerment and healing. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Tanasha Mujera. I'm an author, I'm a marketplace professional, and I'm a woman of God. I am a representation of tested faith. I represent my healed wounds that left ugly scars. This is the Faith in Action podcast that has been created to help you find the journey to your true self through conversations and lessons shared. Good evening, good morning, good day, depending on where you're watching us from. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Faith in Action podcast with me, your host, Tina Mujera. I'm super excited as usual. We have exciting, exciting, um, an exciting guest um, for you guys today. Um, but before I get into that, I just wanted to circle back on Authentically Woman. Um, if you all remember, or if you all remember from last week, we spoke about Authentically Woman and how we've united or restarted this whole healing circle. We are on Facebook as Authentically Woman as a fa- on the face uh, as a Facebook group. Um, I encourage you to, you know, tell a sister about it. Join us um, as we continue to evolve to evolve on this journey um, of healing. Um, I talk about, you know, my healed wounds that left ugly scars, and there's more to unpack. I believe that all of us have a part in us that we need to heal. And again, like I said, it's an evolving journey. So call a sister, invite a sister. Let's go on this healing journey together. I'm super excited once more to have you guys join us uh, today because I am also excited about the guest that we have on the house, um, a powerhouse um, really to reckon with. Her name is Lusanda Lamini, and I'm just going to read through her bio because it's power packed. Lusanda has more than 20 years of corporate experience in marketing. She focused on client relationship management, business development, organizational development, social responsibility, as well as social investment. She studied business management and in 2010 graduated from Vets Business School with a qualification in management advanced program. Lysander is the founder of Women of Reverence and Together We Thrive uh, podcast. She's also a life coach. She's a mentor. She's a woman of God. She's an inspirational speaker, a real powerhouse. I've heard her speak. I've heard her MC. I've heard her preach. And I've heard her host her podcast. Her heartwarming stories and passion for purpose for fulfilled life take her audiences on a journey that leads to transformation. Again, I'm excited to have Lysanda on the house. She also happens to be my Mrora or my squeezer, that is my sister-in-law. So it's a family thing. Um, um, one thing about her is she's real. And um, if you all can just help me to welcome her to the Faith in Action podcast. Lysanda, welcome. Thank you so much, Tina. I'm so honored to be with you, especially because I'm your Mrora, your daughter-in-law, oh, my Quiza. <laughs> it's a family thing. I I'm know. excited. 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited and um we are really so honored to have you you know make time for us. I know your schedule is busy, hectic and when you just accepted the invite I was like okay God is in this and we're going to do this. So sis, thank you so much. Really we appreciate you and we appreciate um that which God has put on the inside of you and we can't wait to draw from the the wisdom that you carry and all that you're going to pour on us um this evening. So no, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really honored and privileged now on a serious note to be here to share what God has put in both in our hearts and what God is doing within your ministry. Um, and I know a little bit um, of your journey, so I'm really honored that you could see fit that I can contribute to the community you're building with Authentically Women and Faith in Action. So I'm really privileged. Thank you. Listen, she's got all the names right. <laughs> what we doing, uh, my Mora? Listen, yeah. Lusanda, I just want to, you know, go straight into it because time is one thing we struggle with here, yeah, and I don't mm -hmm. want us to miss what you have prepared for us. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was reading your guiding scripture, and I'll start here. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about Luke twelve forty eight, mm -hmm. um, and but the one who did not know it and did things worthy of a beating will receive only a few lashes. From everyone to whom much has been given, much mm. will be required. Mm. And to whom they entrusted much of him, they will ask the more. You mm. know, and I, it just struck me because a few, actually when we started this month, um, and I was just praying with a group of women, um, just to pray into the month, I was given the scripture, John 15, you know, one to two. And, um, you know, it talks about, you know, how how God, is, is, you know, the, the pruning, um, you know, it says, yeah, I'll just read it. I'm the true vine and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will even be more fruitful. Fruitful. Yeah. So I looked at the scripture you shared as your guiding scripture and, I, and this scripture, because I struggled when we began the month. I'm like, but God, how do you, when I'm already producing, you come and you say you're going to cause pain because pruning is painful okay. that I may produce the more. And yeah. I just want to hear from you, you know, you saying that that is the scripture that guides you into this journey of faith and service. Um, and talking about the pruning, um, in, in what ways has God pruned you to produce more, to become the woman that you are today? Uh, I think um, God prunes us daily. The, the main fruit is for me is to be like Christ, be Christ-like. So every day I find that God prunes me. How I yeah. speak to my husband, how I speak to my children, how I treat people on the road, maybe when a taxi cuts me, how I interact with people. Um, sure. I find that the Lord wants to work within us. Everything, Tina, starts mm. within. Because mm. we obviously we are spirit uh, body and um, with spirit body and mind, which means soul, emotions really. But God cares more or God is considers what is important, the spirit man. So God starts within and then we see the fruit um, in the physical outside. So the pruning for me always happens daily. Um, I'll make you this example. I was in a meeting today uh, with, a, with a client and they said, Lusanda, because you're going to be a speaker, if you don't want to speak to the delegates, if you want to put boundaries, they can be overwhelming at times. And I said, no, 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 no. I will speak to anyone who wants to speak to me because the one that has opened this door for me is about people. Sure. He sure. died for people. So, so I find that in any opportunity that God gives me, there's a pruning that that can happen. And we need to always be thinking from a lens of faith or from 
from within. So, and it's good that God prunes us. I know Christian Kane, I might be misquoting this, but Christian Kane says, when God is taking us to a season of growth, we have to go through a pruning. So God can't trust you with much if he doesn't prune you. Sure. Because what, God cares about your character more than your gift. Sure. So we can yeah. risk with a gift. You can risk with me. My gift maybe is public speaking. You can risk now. But if my character is not in line with what I stand for, and that is Jesus, don't invite me to your podcast. So I find that pruning helps with the character that God wants that needs to be Christ-like. And I find that we get pruned every day, at least me, <laughs> you get pruned every day. I don't think we get to a place, obviously we mature as Christians, but you never get to a place where you say, I don't need pruning. Yo. Wow. Wow. So, wow. so, so for me, as much as, and you know this, Tina, actually the Holy Spirit has just dropped this. The vine, the vine dresser is very close to the one <laughs> he's pruning. So he, he's not pruning far. He's not standing far and he doesn't care. When he prunes, just think of roses. When I'm not a gardener. My, my husband is from Zim, so he knows about farming. So I just know a little bit. But when, when you, you, you work on your garden, you are right there. You are working on the soil. You are removing weeds. So imagine mm. if the vine dresser is pruning you, which means you are together like this, which means he's right there with you in the pain or the struggle, the stretching mm. you're feeling, God is with you. Then you can talk to him. Holy Spirit, I'm struggling with self-control. Help me. Holy Spirit, I'm struggling with patience. The, uh, um, the word says this is a fruit of the Spirit. Help me. He says, he's very clear in the Gospels, I think in John 16, where he says it's better for him to go so that he can send us the helper. Yeah. So yeah. he's not far when he's pruning. It's just up to us to yield and surrender and talk to him. He's a mm. God who's alive. He's a God mm. who speaks. He's a God. Mm. You know, don't you talk to your daughter daily? We do. We do. Oh, sure. I talk to my daughters daily. Mm. So God is talking to you as his daughter daily. So in the pruning, it's not it's this God who's sitting with a stick in heaven and say, yeah, be pruned. He's right there. Your heart needs to be surrendered and say, okay, Lord, I'm here. Take me through it. Wow. 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 Now, there you have it, listeners and watchers. We've just started the podcast and it's pouring here. Super excited. And shoo, thank you for that response, Lisanda. It's just. That is deep. I actually never thought of it that way, that in the pruning is right here with you. He's not far because the vine dresser is, that is just so deep. And um, thank you for sharing. And I guess to all those that are going through some trying times, hard times, we were talking about this year, having been one of the most toughest years that people are really going through. And remember that in this year that we are saying is tough, right there in the pain, right there in that, you know, distress, the Lord is nearer than ever before um yeah. so thank you Amanda. you know i am i'm very observant of you from afar even <laughs> um and and i i mean it's been i'm sure two years or so and i think the very first time i saw you i was just like Ooh, this woman there's something about her you know when you're drawn to the spirit of a person and you were emceeing and then you gave me a word and one thing i've then realized and just picked about you in every platform on every platform that i see you is this consistency you know it's it's this consistency throughout it, it doesn't matter you are preaching it doesn't matter you are emceeing podcasting or speaking or just chatting to someone you are one person and Thanks. i've always wondered how you do it because it's that authenticity that i pick from you throughout and and, and I wanted to ask to say, 
how do you how do you maintain authenticity how have you what has made you and when i say what has made you i mean not like celebrity making but like yeah. character speech behavior you know you're a calm person i see you as that you know you it's like you're very you've got a very authoritative demeanor but very calm at the same time so i'm looking at you and i observe and i'm like how does she do it and, and still maintain it in through through and through can you tell us and break us break that down for us in 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 terms of what you know journey you've been on personally even if you can um and and take us how, to how you've become who you are to be honest um tina my journey didn't start well um i think i was in the world like most of us, um, I not not like most of us, <laughs> but I was in the world, and um, I experienced teenage pregnancy, which we didn't get married with the father. I was a single mother in the true form, um, and then I moved in with someone later in my life, and he left me and married someone else, left me pregnant, and that's when I. I found the Lord, or should I say the Lord found me. Um, he had been pursuing me for years because my mother and my grand, my grand, especially on my maternal side, they are born again Christians. So I knew of the truth, but I didn't leave the truth. And the Lord pursued me. And one night I gave my life over to the Lord. And, and through my walk with Jesus, um, as you know, um, and you've got your spiritual disciplines, that prayer, fasting, studying and reading the word, worship, um, and you are fellowshipping within a local community, which is the local church. Um, for me, that helped me that my sanctification can happen. And I think it's not popular these days to have those foundational spiritual disciplines to to we are happy to listen to your podcast or to my podcast and think we've received the word no the bible is very clear first that the word the word became flesh in john 1 1 so jesus is the word so and the bible is clear that sanctification happens through the holy spirit who convicts us he says the word is can rebuke and convict and correct us i think it's it's in timothy somewhere um mm -hmm. and and so we need to study the word and the if you study the word it's like looking in a mirror the holy spirit will speak to you will we'll expose your heart at least mm. that's my um experience and the yeah. word is like fresh bread for me mm. I, I i don't i know in zim you you bake a lot you bake bread it, it, even in well africa as a whole when my mom breaks bakes bread and it's hot and it's it's smelling beautiful, it's fresh. You want to sure. cut it and put margarine. That should be the word for us every day. We should yeah. never get to a place that like, no, I've read the Bible, I've got the revelation. So for me, the word anchors me, the word centers me, the word mm -hmm. rebukes me, the word mm -hmm. encourages me, the word mm -hmm. inspires me, the word opens my eyes. So the word <laughs> is, is, mm. is my all. Um, and then I, I speak to the Holy Spirit. Um, he, he, he lives within me. Do, and he, may, he speaks to me. Do I get it right all the time? No. Does he rebuke me? And maybe I don't repent immediately. Sometimes, yes. Um, <laughs> does he direct me? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm within a local church where I'm accountable, although I'm a pastor's wife in that church, but I'm still accountable. I still know can call out certain behaviors maybe they see in me. Um, so we should be open for that as well. Wow. Prayer. Prayer is a form of worship to God. Prayer is a communication tool to God. 
the prayer is needed. We should be prayerful people. And God speaks to us through prayer. So, mm -hmm. so for me, those few foundational spiritual disciplines have helped me to shape my character. I was not sure. always like this. Sure. There was sure. a bit of pride. <laughs> I mean, we're born into sin. There was a bit of arrogance. There was a bit yeah. of sin. Definitely, I was enslaved in sin in the way I was leading my life. But only the word, the truth, Jesus changed mm -hmm. me. So we mm -hmm. can't be in and out. You have one foot in, one foot. If you want to be um, consistent, authentic, um, humble, all these fruits of the Holy Spirit, you can't do it on your own. Mm. You can't. Mm. The self-help mm. tools don't work. True. I'm sorry to say. They don't Amen. work. The yeah. word of God. And God has mm. put certain things in his word that if we follow them, actually our lives would be easier than when we were in the world. That's right. And it's not easy to accept because we view even our Christian walk from the, the lens of na the natural instead of the lens of faith. That's right. That's right. Sure. So, so I mean, this is, is it's a huge subject, but for me, even repentance. I have to, grace, we've taken it to the extreme that I can behave in a certain way. For example, pitch here in this podcast two hours late. No, this that's on, not just not honoring to you. It's not honoring to God. Yeah. That whom I represent, who am, I'm an ambassador of. So what am mm -hmm. I trying to say, Tina, is be rooted, be anchored, be teachable, be humble, be just look to Jesus. Mm. Desire to be Christ like. Mm. Mm. Jesus mm. should be our first love. Jesus should be our campus. Jesus should be our everything. And mm. everything should flow from there. Wow. 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 Thank you. Thank you for taking us back to where it should have always started, the foundations and the basics that I, I think sometimes we tend to just neglect and think we have arrived, even unknowingly. Um, you know, the way you just explained that bread and that freshness, you want to smell it daily. So if the word is likened to that, why are we not smelling it? Why are we not taking the word daily so that we can get that fresh aroma daily for ourselves um, to be able to be nourished? So thank you, sis, for such a thoughtful and deep um, um, response on that. Um, same time. So my next question is serving and faith. Serving requires, I was writing here, I, said, I actually said serving equals people. And I think that the the most difficult, I mean, even today I was saying um, to, 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 to my helper and I, and I got home, I said, ah, you know what? I think the most difficult thing in this world is dealing with people and we cannot run away from them because I just had one of those hectic days where you're dealing with individuals. Yeah. It's just so hard and, and to get through somebody. And as I was writing, you know, this podcast notes, I said, serving equals people. And knowing that you are one that is called to serve in faith. I mean, with all these roles, I mean, being a pastor's wife cannot be easy. I can't imagine this how you do it. I've always ran, ran away from, the, from, from, you know, when people want to put me in situations and I'm like, ah, you won't catch me. I'm sorry because I'm literally running away. Yeah. from people you know because mm. it's so hard and sometimes mm. you know it's almost like i don't want to say it reveals uh, um something in negative in you but it it can and and you can end up acting in a way that is not you because you know you've been pushed sometimes or it's just so mm. hard and, and, 
and in that moment, snap or, or something just happens. So how have you navigated through that dealing with people at the same time being able to still honor and serve them and, and, and navigate through complex um, situations? So, Even if you're going to... Yeah. So for example, Jesus dealt with people. They were difficult to Jesus. He was fully man when he was here. He was fully God. Um, and for me, that's the person I look to first. How did Jesus deal with people? Sure. He dealt with them gently. Did he move away from the truth? No. I'm just reminded of when he said, he put that table up and said, you're doing this in my father's house. Jesus mm -hmm. loved people. Sure. Jesus um, forgave people. I'm one of the people that he, he forgave. Jesus forgave people. Um, so you can't claim to love Jesus. You can't claim to, to worship Jesus. You can't claim to honor Jesus if you don't love people. Mm. Jesus is about people. Jesus didn't come to die for cats. Yeah. Jesus died for people. Oh. Now we we have different from that basis. We have different personalities as 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 people. I'm an extrovert, um, so I get my energy from people. I love being with people. Um, God has called me. It's my calling. It's not a job for me. It's not. It puts me on a certain platform. It's my calling. Um, I know that. I'm convicted of that. I'm convinced of that. Um, it and it comes sometimes. It comes with hurt, but you take that hurt to the cross. You take it to Jesus. Lord, um, Tina has offended me today. God will point you to Matthew. If you if you have something against your brother, go and talk to them. If you don't agree, bring a third person. So God has given us these, I could say, tools to deal with offense, tools to deal with forgiveness and all of that. But one thing God is clear about is that he doesn't want anyone to perish. Hmm. And what an honor and a blessing that you get called and chosen by ho the holy God to, to serve his people, his God. I think for me, I always look at it this way. God can say, hey, B, C, things happen. I mean, he did it in Genesis. Let there be light. And there was light. But he has chosen to partner with me, a mere man. Yeah. When I say man, mere human being. So, and I think when God has called you somewhere on oh, to serve him in a certain way, he gives you grace for it. Mm -hmm. And if you are mm -hmm. doing it selfishly, then you are going to, to run out, um, almost run out of grace because you are doing it wanting to point to yourself um, but if you are doing it for God, you point them to Jesus. None of us are the answer. I don't sure. care how long you've said, how anointed you are. You point people to Jesus. That's mm. what we call to do. That's Not right. to yourself. You don't have the, all the answers. You don't have the answers. Even you, when I'm talking to someone, um, maybe counseling or they come for wisdom or whatever, I need to pray and ask, Lord, what, how do I navigate the situation? Mm -hmm. So for me, it, it, it's my worship, obedience to the Lord. It's my worship to the Lord. It's my calling um, that God has given me. And I'm honored and privileged that he has chosen me to, to be a pastor's wife in the so many people in the world. So that's how I, I look at it. And I point people back to Jesus. I don't have all the answers, Tina. And I can get it wrong. Wow. And I can say, wow. actually, I don't know. 
or um, mm-hmm. maybe you go and pray and hear what the Lord says, because you know what I mean. So, so yeah. for me, and if I do something wrong, let's say I get impatient with someone or I answer them in a rude way, repent. Go to that person, wow. ask for forgiveness. Wow. And one, wow. 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 Go to that person and ask for forgiveness. And you move on. You move on from there as long as you've done it from a genuine heart and knowing that yeah. you are truly convicted and you mean what you say. Yeah. Sure. What an honor and a privilege mm-hmm. that God has chosen you to partner with mm-hmm. him, to serve his people. Goodness. Yeah. Goodness, goodness. If you are doing it out of your own power, out of your own passion and out of calling yourself, you will not be able to sustain it. You will run out yes. of the grace. Yes. You need the Holy Spirit to empower you. You need the Holy Spirit to be in, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah. For me, it scares me when... I've been invited to platforms where people say, we'll only be 20 ladies. Will you be able to come? I know some people want to preach when there's maybe certain thousands or certain hundreds. I'm like, you know what? I'll Don't even tell me if it's 20 or 30. I'll come for two. Jesus. Mm. Jesus left mm. the 99 for the one. Who am I? Wow. Ooh. Who am I? Ooh. Who am I? My goodness, sis. Now, I have so many questions for you. Um, I'm, I'm also looking at my time. I, I wanted to dial back a little bit into your journey of, you know, where it started. And you just mentioned teenage pregnancy. You mentioned getting into another relationship. Now, if you don't mind just unpacking, you know, a little bit and touching on that journey, for someone listening out there, I mean, today you are a pastor's wife. You are this this woman that we we all look up to. And, you know, there's someone out there who's probably navigating, and I know we have a lot of, you know, women listeners or ladies that listen to the podcast, is you're going through phases and, and tough times, and you, you're just not sure if you're really worthy again. You're like, I hear the word, and I hear you when you say the Holy Spirit speaks to me, and God you know, directs me, but really where I am right now, I'm not even sure. It's like, I'm, I, I, I'm defeated. I'm feeling overwhelmed and I don't have the, the, I don't know what the next step looks like. I don't even have the energy for it. I'm just, yeah, I, I'm listening to the word I want to be, but I don't know anymore. Um, what would, what would you advise and what would you be your words of wisdom, at least to someone who's experiencing what you have experienced in your past? Um, you, for me, Tina, it was easy. It's those foundational spiritual disciplines. Guys, the scripture is very clear. I think it's a Psalm 127. Anyone who builds the house without the Lord labors in vain. If you want to build your house, meaning your your life, your household, without God, you labor in vain. Mm -hmm. So wherever you find yourself, okay, maybe let me touch a bit on this. One of the ladies who encouraged me in the Bible, Rahab. So, Mm -hmm. So Rahab the prostitute. So when the Lord... I came to know Christ and um, I think within a one year I was doing street evangelism at, at then it was called Stanton Square around that area. God gave me a privilege of leading two ladies that were, were working for themselves in the sex, in the sex industry. So prostitute wow. to the Lord. And the Lord said to me that night after leading them to Christ and I'm at home and I'm worshiping and I'm thanking him. And God said, there's no difference between you and them, Lucinda. And I, and I got a bit confused. And, and the Lord spoke to me about sexual immorality, that it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I have two kids out of wedlock. Um, with different men, they ha- they mm, are in sexual intercourse with different men, and they it's both 
um, scenarios were transactional relationships. Mm -hmm. My transaction, what uh, the outcome I was hoping for, that these men love me, maybe even marry me, their outcome is money. So both are transactional, right? Mm -hmm. the, right? The only person who desires um, a relationship with me that is eternal, that will fulfill me, is the one that I'm serving, and it's Jesus Christ. And the Lord opened my eyes to, to the book of Joshua, Rahab, and God said to me, if you walk with me, because I was saved by then, closely like, Rachel, like Rahab did. Rahab heard of God, what he did with the Red Sea and the Israelites, we can't go into the story. The spies came, she, yeah. she, she, she hid the spies. They, in fact, the whole of Jericho knew of what God did for the Israelites at the Red Sea, mm -hmm. at the Red sea and what he did with the Egyptians. And people were fearful of this God, but she had reverence. She mm -hmm. had that holy fear of this God that can do such. And mm. when she saw these spies and knew they were Israelites, and she said, listen, I know your God. I want to be part of your, your I'm going to say the kingdom of God. So by faith, she believed because she didn't see what was happening in the Red Sea. So by faith, she believed. And she said, you will, ser will save me with my father's mm. household. Um, don't leave us here because I know your God has given you Jericho. Mm -hmm. And she really uh, crossed with them when they came. And do you know that Jesus comes from a lineage of, prost of a prostitute? Go hey. look at Matthew chapter 1 hey. verse 5. Hey. From a prostitute to become a great grandmother of the <clears throat> Holy God. Sure, my God. Are you with me? I'm with so you, to that lady who's feeling unworthy, whether you have children out of wedlock, whether you did fraud, whether you are you were performing witchcraft, if you want to transition from unworthiness to worthiness, believe in faith that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Change your life, align it to the truth of God, and let God restore you. I always say um, the, the definition of restoration is, if you look at in Google or Oxford Dictionary, it's taking something that and bring it to its original form. So, for example, a table that's now broken or not even broken, scratched, all of these things, and you come and you sand it and you paint it, and it goes back to the original form. But the wow. restoration of God is when God takes you from the pit of hell. He pulls you out from the pit of hell in, in from his generous heart. He generously Push, pulls you out from a pit of hell and he puts you at a place of honor. Mm. Look at Rahab. She was a well-known prostitute. She was a sheep. Her family was sheep, what we would call sheep in queens. That's it. And God came with his generous heart and graciously pulled her out from a pit of hell and put her on a place of honor and positioned mm. her from a place mm. of honor and said, my son will come from your lineage. Jesus. So you cannot think you're going to feel worthy without God. You're going to feel worthy when you are given the self-help tools, five steps for three months. Believe you me, you'll go back. Sure. Because the self-help tools are giving you practical things to do physically, whereas God's tools, which is the word of God, works within. 
and then you see fruit outside and it's sustainable because the Holy Spirit is there with you and he keeps on saying, not you. You can't behave like that, not you. No, no you, not you me. Lord. And you are co heir with the Lord Jesus Christ, no mm. matter your, your, your background, no matter your past, no matter your, your choices that were ugly. If today one of the listeners is saying, how do I get out of the pit of hell? Be like Rahab and said, mm. I know this God of Tina and Lusanda. I Thank want God. him. Mm. And he will make you unworthy the fruit of your womb the lineage that he will give you afterward will blow you away you 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 amen sure 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 thank you sis you're speaking to me yeah 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 yo you're speaking to me as well and and i'm just yeah thank you lord thank you for this beautiful time the self-help mm -hmm. tools will not take you far. The only thing that is more eternal is when the spirit works within you. So I think sometimes we want to escape and use those and think we're helping ourselves because we run away from God's word in as much as we know it. And we want to find, you know, microwave, uh, waves, um, almost like we want to bypass it. Let me just bypass it and, 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 and get to the other side. But you won't, like Lysander says, you'll still come back to the very same place until you allow him to work in and through you. Sure. That's Thank you, sis. We started with pruning. Sure. Sure. We want to prune you so that you bear much fruit. That's right. My God. Now, you already touched on reverence, and I'm asking, I'm laughing in my, in my heart, and I say, oh, is this where women of reverence started? Because now I'm getting excited. <laughs> that was my next question to say, you know, what was that spark that inspired you to start Women of Reverence and together with Thrive Africa? Um, if you can take us through that. So it was a journey of 11 years, Tina. And it was a journey of, you know, you know when God takes your mess and makes it a message, it's God taking my mess that I did um, and said, I'll make really a message out of it because um, when we say yes go to God, it's a breakthrough for someone else. Um, so when you say yes to God, to your purpose or your calling, you say yes to God, to obeying his word, um, it's a breakthrough for someone else. There's another quote. I can't remember the, the person who said it, but he said, sometimes you're the only Bible that someone will read. Wow. So, so for me, Woman of Reverence, it was just, yes, Lord, um, obedience to God, step of faith. It's not like I heard this voice from heaven. <laughs> that says, you are going to birth Woman of Reverence. It was journaling, a journey, my walk with Jesus over 11 years. And God kept on dropping these ideas. I struggled with fear of failure, Tina. And sometimes I still have to fight it even now. Because it, God showed me that it came, the root of that was my teenage pregnancy because I was in matric. I was doing well. So when that hit me, the enemy found a gap when, mm -hmm. uh, and, and said, you will never amount to anything. So, and obviously, you know, when you get pregnant at a young age, people, and I came from a small town, people say a whole lot of things, family and non-family, and they speak these words. So I think they took root because I didn't have Christ, obviously. And I just had a fear of failure. And, sure. and God, as I was walking with him, getting to know him, gave my life, God would drop thoughts. And, and I journaled a lot then, and I still do. And I just would write, God is saying this. I feel like God mm -hmm. is saying this. Or mm -hmm. um, this thought came. 
But in 2018, one day, I was um, preparing to go to a leadership summit in KZN, and I was bathing. The Lord said to me, forgive a teacher, forgive so-and-so, um, and your creativity will be unblocked. I'm like, what? And this incident, it happened at high school, and that was in 1990, I think it was 1992. Wow. And I said, Lord, I, I forgive him. I don't even know if he's, he's still alive, but I, I forgive him. And, and the Lord said to me in 2018, take all your journals from 2009 and go through them. And I went through them. And I could pick up certain things that were almost like in sync that make sense of what you see in Women of Reverence today. And then in 2019, God said, let's structure it. And God structured it in that way. And I must be honest, in 2017, 2018, especially 2017, June, there was a major struggle in our lives with Joseph in terms of ministry. And I remember going to the Lord and saying, Lord, did you take me to that business school for this? <laughs> and he said, what your heart? It's full of pride. And I was like, Jesus. Anyway, I, I repented. And it, it was uh, then in 2018, he then said, I must look at these journals. 2019, then we structured what you see in Woman of Reverence. And then 2020, we launched. So I can't claim, Tina, to say. Um, it was my idea. God had specific instructions. For example, mm -hmm. that it must be multicultural, multiracial, multigenerational, multi-churches. Mm -hmm. Um, that I should embrace women and I should honor those that have gone before us. I'm very protective of those that have gone before us, the older generation. God, God said for you to be able to birth this, it's because that generation prays and God for something like this. And again, I honor the younger generation to me because I know there'll be a season when God will say, pass the beta. Mm. And, the, and um, my, the younger generation are helping me with this. I was telling your assistant, Bumi, that Bumi, I don't want to touch anything after you've said I must press here and here. I don't want to touch anything because technology freaks me out. And she said, okay, just have water. Leave it like this. It's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, 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 so for me, I know it's not my ministry. I'm called to steward it. It belongs to the Lord. He gave it to me on a silver platter. And, and it's, it's, I sometimes look at it and, and, think lord are you really taking it today when you say you're taking it you know because wow i fight fear of failure daily wow wow, wow. because i was told i'm i'm not worthy hmm. sure. so so even together we thrive podcast it's his idea Wow. And I'm not trying to be, I promise you, it is for me, Tina, to be honest, maybe I'll be happy in corporate. <laughs> that, that was my idea. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> that was my wow. idea. Wow. And when God pulled me out, obviously, that was his idea. So right. it's it, it really, it, had, it was a journey of 11 years before we launched in 2020. And it's still his journey. And, and at times when I'm running things, now I'm telling all the rebukes, the secrets. <laughs> when I'm <laughs> running things, and our, the Lord will say to me, remember, woman of reverence is my baby. And even when I'm praying, Lord, we have to pay for this website. And God mm -hmm. says, it's my baby. <laughs> my goodness. Sure. Yeah. 
Sure, yeah. sis. Yeah. That is that is so deep. And and I think it it it, it also speaks into what we, we we term, you know, purpose. And I guess it's got many interpretations. But like you yeah. say, God gave you on a silver platter. And sometimes God just presents it before you, I suppose. Or maybe you can just give us an understanding of of purpose in your own journey and in what God has said or spoken to you about what purpose is and what it repre- represents. Because I find, especially nowadays, everybody is awakening to the, they want to awaken to the deepest sense of who they are. And then they they come across a stumble across the word purpose, finding you and, and, and all of these things that are being spoken. But, you know, we just want to hear from you as well. What What is your take on that? Or what is your interpretation or rather what God has revealed to you in that space? For me to, to because there was um, almost like a wrestling with God um, for three years, I think from 2013 to about 2015 to say, because I was now, you could see that the grace of being in corporate was, had lifted off. I was just not at peace. There was, I knew there was change coming. I wasn't sure. And, and the Lord took me to Ephesians 2 verse 10, that we are God's workmanship and he's mm-hmm. got good works prepared ahead for us um, mm-hmm. before even we basically were knitted in our mother's wombs. Mm-hmm. So for me, that scripture defined purpose. There's certain things that God is God for Lusanda Lamini that he prepared way ahead of time mm-hmm. Um, for me, even before I was knitted in my mother's womb. So clearly, if I'm still breathing, those are the things that I should be working or walking out. Hmm. Now, then um, God helped me to say, I, I always use when I'm coaching this acronym SHAPE, to say it for strengths of spiritual gifts, uh, because I'm a Christian life coach, I normally use spiritual gifts. Um, H, what is burning your heart? Your heart. If God would say, no, just go to SARS and collect your monthly salary. <laughs> like you don't have to work. What would you do? What's burning in your heart? It, it, you know, what would you do? And, um, and A, your abilities, what has God given you? What skills? So God, there's no waste in God. That I've yeah. gone to business school, God used it through women of reverence. That's why I could structure the way I structured. That's why I can write proposals. Um, so abilities, maybe public speaking, at school you were debating, it's part of what you are doing now. And then P, your personality. So S, mm. spiritual gifts, H, heart, your passion, then A, your ability, then P, for, per, for, for personality, are you an extrovert, are you an introvert? Really, what, what, even if you are an introvert, God created, has woven that personality for a reason. You know what I mean? So don't look down on it, even for extroverts. Because I remember God saying to me, I used to look at my brother and be envious because he's an introvert, my older brother. And I'm an extrovert, I'm a louder. And people used to say, oh, you're too much. You, and they would sure. you're not like your brother. So sure. God said, I've got people that need your personality. My God. Um, and then E, experience. What experience do you have? Like... My testimony of two kids out of wedlock, then God restores me, I get married. So God will use that experience, that mess, and turn it to a message for ladies that think, am I worthy? I've got one child out of wedlock. Can I really get married at 36? Because I got married at 36. Can I get, can I, I feel God is calling me to be a pastor's wife, but I've got this history. I'm the first generation Christian. Can he use me? You know, so, so for me, in terms of the practicality of shaping your purpose, but really purpose for me is Ephesians 2 verse 20. You can, 
I mean, Ephesians 2, yes, verse 10, not 20. Ephesians 2, verse 10. You can use the power of your words and define it, but you cannot walk in purpose without Jesus. Because he, he's the one who created you and set aside good works for you to do. So it goes back to Jesus. Sure, sure. You are such a powerhouse. You are such a powerhouse, Lisa. And I absolutely love hearing and listening when you speak because I know I can't miss a word because there's so much power and wisdom that always flows out of you. Since you see what I said about time, we're already nearing an hour and I oh, so, sorry. so hate this <laughs> always has to happen and we must wrap up before, you know, just when we feel like we are geared up and we're getting into it, then we need to wrap up. You know, I wanted to just in closing as well, um, you know, you spoke about women of reverence and how you honor the older generation, the people that came before us. It's amazing how God speaks to us because I'm literally putting together a sermon for, for one of those um, well platforms they've asked me to speak. And God was speaking to me about the very same thing, but he took me to um, Jairus' daughter, the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. If you yeah. read in that scripture, um, 12 and 12, the woman with the issue of blood had had the issue of blood for 12 years. Am I right? Yes. 12 years. Yeah. And it is then that she, she, of course, she was in the crowd and she, by faith, went and touched the hem of his garment. Mm. And we are told that, you know, it, it, it is at the very same time that Jairus' daughter, who was also 12, mm. needed to be healed. Mm. And I think God was just unpacking and it's still brewing, but it was just unpacking to me about the importance of how the older generation needs to be restored first before yes. this next generation has to be restored. Because it's not by coincidence that this 12th and the 12th merge at the very same time and they both receive their healing. So yeah. I'm aligned with what you're saying. And, and I think there's something there really that, you know, we sometimes think we've made ourselves. We sometimes think we just woke up and I'm a woman of prayer, but no, somebody prayed, somebody fasted, mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. interceded. Some of them mm -hmm. I don't even know, um, but they were there. Someone laid their hand on my on me as a baby or spoke, spoke a word uh, to mm -hmm. my mom or, you know, something, some way. That mm -hmm. older generation still needs to be reverent. And, and, Can and I that tell is... you a testimony on that? Sorry, my, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, she had one of these prayers. God had promised her that from her lineage, there will be someone who will serve within a pastoral um, capacity. So she used to pray that prayer while we were still in the world. Me and my cousins were laughing. Because <laughs> all of us thought, oh, corporate business, that type of thing. And, and when I got married to Joseph and she heard that Joseph is a pastor, she celebrated. Wow. And to top it all, my aunt, my mom's younger sister, phoned me the other day and said, I wish I could wake up my mom just for five minutes. So that she can see that her prayer was answered. Jesus. So I'm trying to say the fruit I'm walking into or I'm walking out, my grandmother wow. Wow. had prayed for her children and prayed for us when she got saved in the 80s. Sure. That I thank God for. I know the prayers I'm sowing in now I'll probably never see the fruit of it. My mm -hmm. daughter will have children. And they will they will say I had a grandmother, apparently. <laughs> then, sure. Wow. So, wow. So, so that's why we these generations have to work together. These generations 
And, the, and I mean, the Bible is clear. It gives command to older women to say, teach younger women, Titus 2, um, 3 to 5, how to not to be lazy, not to have too much wine, to love their husbands, take care of their children. So, so we see Naomi and Ruth, um, that mm. dynamic. So, so God wants these different generations to work together. There's something, there's an, a spiritual exchange that happens, that can happen in boardrooms. Um, but hey, it's one hour. I don't want to take too much of your time. <laughs> Man, this has been so full. Oh my God, my heart is so full. Basana, yes. thank you. Thank, thank you again. You. Thank you, sis, yes. for honoring us on, on the Faith in Action podcast platform. We are really, uh, my heart is full. I believe all the watchers and listeners that you guys have also been filled. Um, so much wisdom has been poured on us. So much to take on and really just meditate upon and think through. You know, your mess can become your message, she says. And um, she speaks about how she's also overcome the fear of failure and what it meant and how she navigates through life um, from that point of view. So thank you for, her, for, 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 for honoring the Faith in Action podcast. Where can people get a hold of you? And where can they listen to the podcast and every other thing that you are doing? Okay, um, on, on social medias, at Women of Reverence, Facebook, Instagram, and um, Together We Thrive on Instagram is Together We Thrive Africa. Then on YouTube, it's Together We Thrive Podcast. That's where they can listen and Spotify, they can listen there. So yeah, that's where I am. And obviously my personal Instagram at Lusanda Tlamin. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, sis. We've also tagged her pages. We've tagged her. If you want to follow all those pages, if you didn't hear the handles um, while she was speaking, please just go through to, through, um, to our page and um, you will find the handles tagged on there and you can follow and, and, and hear more of this wisdom that we've just had today. Sis, yeah. thank you again. God bless you. Please stay on the line to the Faith in Action podcast. Thank you for yet another exciting episode. Again, I invite you all to come through and, um, you know, evolve with me on this healing journey um, as we build authentically women together. It's an exciting, exciting platform and I can't wait to reveal all that God has placed on my heart, especially with regards to healing and us moving in that authenticity as women. So I'll catch you on the other side, but for now it's goodbye and God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Tenashi Mujera. I'm an author, I'm a marketplace professional, and I'm a woman of God. I am a representation of tested faith. I represent my healed wounds that left ugly scars. This is the Faith in Action podcast that has been created to help you find the journey to your true self through conversations and lessons shared.